Everybody knows that we have three major cons, but which one was the best for 2020? What's going on guys? Welcome back to Slapshot Pops and today we're doing a little bit of a different video. We're going to be doing a throwback Thursday video. We want to just right off the bat apologize. We took a couple days off because we had to get everyone's whatnot packages packed. We had to get all the giveaways and uh, just a lot of stuff going on. So thank you guys for being patient but we're back with another big video that I've been working on for a while. So like I said we're doing a little bit of a throwback Thursday. We're getting to the end of 2020, so I want to just take a minute and recap. Emerald City Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, and of course, New York Comic Con. Which one was the best for 2020? Well, today we're going to break it down and we're going to find out. So, like I said, a little bit of a different video, and uh, I actually went through, and even in my badass Boba Fett notebook check this out uh, I went through and I took a little bit of notes because I wanted to make sure that I got everything I wanted to say included in this video so we can talk about it we can break it down and uh, there's just a lot it's a lot of details for three major conventions so here we go we're gonna get going with Emerald City Comic-Con 2020 all right so first up we unfortunately we have to mention that the pandemic put a hamper on things for the entire year and the first major event to fall was Emerald City Comic Con so that unfortunately was canceled in March they originally postponed it to August however as we all know that also did not happen but Funko still released their Emerald City Comic Con exclusives in March as regularly scheduled online you had to be a lucky lottery winner to actually purchase some of the exclusives however others were offered openly to everyone later on so we're gonna go through some of those exclusives today right off the bat we had 35 different pops three pop pins four sodas and three pop pets so pretty good overall with a variety of products biggest thing here we had Funko Sodas. This was the introduction of a revolution with Funko Sodas. Everyone's popping open sodas now on their channel, on whatnot. They're doing case breaks on Instagram. Everybody's popping them open. Everybody loves them. Sodas are awesome. Emerald City Comic Con kicked it off. And one of the best sodas that we got in 2020 was this green Batman soda limited to 5,000 pieces. So this is the common and there is even a pink chase. I don't have the pink Batman chase yet. It's still on my list, but you know, we're going to get it down the road. We're going to get it. So that was big right off the bat. And we not only got Batman, but we got Huckleberry Hound, Scott Pilgrim and Ramona Flowers all had their own chases. Very limited, very low in numbers. Freaking awesome. Now, moving into the pops, we did get some really cool pops. Right off the bat, we always have to talk about the limited pieces from every con, the ones that get everyone hyped up and excited. And one of the ones that got me really excited, I haven't been able to get my hands on it yet, is the 1,500-piece Loch Ness Monster. And this one from Emerald City Comic Con glows in the freaking dark. So cool we're gonna put up a picture of the glow for you guys like i said i don't have that pop yet it is skyrocketed very expensive pop very cool and uh, arguably the best pop from the con that wasn't it though we got a lot of other cool stuff we also got a 1500 piece crusaderette once again i was not able to snag that pop that pop everybody was going crazy for when it did drop everybody was eating it up like crazy we did have some issues we kind of got the introduction with our first virtual con with the bots Unfortunately, unfortunately, that's just how it goes sometimes, but that pop has since drastically dropped in price. And uh, moving forward, we did get a Freddy from this con, and that is something that I have right here to show off. So this was not only just a Freddy pop, but you have the entire pop town, first Freddy pop town, and this is the Funko HQ. Very cool pop. You got Freddy with his bags there. Everybody's coming out of the HQ with bags and bags full of stuff. So very cool pop. Always excited to have a Freddy exclusive to a con. It wasn't exclusive in number. It was just exclusive to the con. Very cool pop. Something that I was very excited about and I was lucky enough to pick up. Another wave of pops that we have to talk about is The Office. The Office pops kind of took over this year. And they had an exclusive for Emerald City Comic Con very much went with their green theme and this is the version one recyclops of dwight 
Schrute from The Office. Another great pop. Love the little plant he's holding. Awesome. Fantastic job. And uh, another pop that got me really excited, of course, is Star Wars. I love my Star Wars. You guys know that. And uh, they actually dropped this Futura Boba Fett. Very, very cool. Love the paint job. The black box goes perfectly with this guy. Awesome pop. I had to pick this one up. Had to pick it up. We also got some other pops like the 10-inch Indiana Jones. A lot of people were excited for that. And um, overall, it was a pretty good con. I was very happy with the layout, the exclusives, everything they had to offer. It was a little bit on the lighter side. However, Emerald City Comic Con is usually the smallest of the three cons when it comes to exclusives, the diversity, and the catalog. So overall, good con. We got some limited pieces. Everybody cares about limited pieces. And... Um, Moving down the road, we thought we weren't going to have any more virtual cons. Well, we were hoping we were not going to have any more virtual cons. But then San Diego Comic-Con rolled around for virtual con number three. All right, guys. So now we're moving into San Diego Comic-Con. And uh, San Diego Comic-Con is usually full of fire. However... This year was a little different, um, and we're gonna we're gonna get in on into all of it right now. So right off the bat, you guys can see I only have three pops here from San Diego Comic Con. Not as much stuff as I have from Emerald City Comic Con, and believe it or not, I actually have more stuff from New York Comic Con. I'm consider myself a slow collector. I usually don't get everything when stuff drops. Um, I kind of just get stuff over time, and I take my time knocking things off one by one, which is okay. It's just how I collect. I'm I'm a little bit more patient than some people but that's okay everybody's different all right so moving into san diego comic-con pandemic is still in play this is virtual con number three everybody's excited funko has announced that they're going to be dropping a whole slew of products on a certain time and date everybody's getting ready however we ran into major problems with the funko shop website everybody got the wheel of death for anywhere I know we got it for 45 50 minutes and then unfortunately we were not able to get anything some people did get through and they were able to pick up some of the exclusives that we're about to talk about so going off the bat from their catalog we have 39 pops and four exclusive Funko sodas well remember in Emerald City Comic Con we were talking about how exciting the sodas were well unfortunately Funko came right back and they said oh you know those sodas we're not going to have any chases for the San Diego Comic-Con sodas, unfortunately. So we got four sodas, Trap Jaw, Tearaway Face, Crunchberry Beast, which a lot of people were excited for, and Moss Man. Unfortunately, there was no chases, which kind of ruins the fun of opening them up and seeing which one you got. Everybody knew they got the common, and these were super limited, but for a lot of people, there was no, no point in opening them up, and a lot of people still have them sealed. The only bright spot with these, with the Moss Man, it's actually a flocked soda. First flocked soda they've ever done. And so a little bit of cool factor there, but nothing crazy. All right, moving into the pops. Like I said, we always got to break down limited pieces first, right? One of the most anticipated, excited pieces that people were looking forward to was the 3,000 piece Black Lightning. If you guys don't know, Black Lightning is a lesser known dc superhero he did have his own show on the cw um very cool character just kind of new in the dc world that was limited to 3,000 pieces his first pop ever that pop everybody was going nuts for at one point it was selling for four hundred dollars went on ppg about a couple hours ago it's now going for around a hundred and ten dollars so just kind of proves my point that with some of these pieces even though limited it's it's prove it's proven that you should wait and don't get something right away because a hundred and ten dollars that's just shy of 25 percent of the peak price that it was selling at when it first dropped so that wasn't the only limited piece we got we got the 1000 piece red astronaut toucan very cool pop right mm. Little bit of a <laughs> little bit of details there, a little bit of a snag. You could only get this 1,000 piece pop if you were a member of Tier Four or Tier Five of the uh, Funko Museum membership. So, and just to give you, a, a, if you guys remember or recall, 
to be a part of tier four was $500. So that puts the price of this pop at $500 starting right off the bat. It has since come down to $350. So still pretty high, 1,000 pieces, pretty rare. Still pretty high for a pop, $350. That's, you know, that's, that's a good chunk of change. However, not $500. So that also has come down in price. Biggest letdown with San Diego Comic-Con. No Freddy's. How do we not have any Freddy's? No fun days, unfortunately, because of the pandemic. But we didn't have a single Freddy. This I do not understand. And I have another full video that we're going to talk about. The Freddy's of 2020. So I'm not going to get too much on that rant. As you guys know, I love my Freddy's. No Freddy's from San Diego Comic Con 2020. I was very hurt, very let down as a collector, and I know a lot of other people were as well. Another thing we didn't get up until now, so before everybody jumps on and, and starts correcting me, we did not get any Conan pops for San Diego Comic Con. Conan, in conjunction with TBS and um, Funko, of course, they usually drop four to five exclusive Conan pops during the week of San Diego Comic-Con. Conan usually gives them away during his live shows in San Diego. However, that didn't happen. We didn't have any Conan pops up until about a week and a half ago where we found out that now there are five exclusive pops. Uh, they're available uh, in the lottery system on TBS's website. That's a whole other thing. So it is still cool that we're getting Conan pops. However, we didn't get them for SDCC. So there was some cool pops with the con. I have a few of them out here we're going to talk about briefly. Uh, we did get a very cool Sonic 2-pack. We also got a 10-inch zombie thing, which was pretty cool. But I've seen a lot of those still sitting on the GameStop shelves as of this week. So it wasn't that popular. The Anchorman pops, they kind of dropped out of nowhere. We didn't have any Anchorman pops. And then all of a sudden, we got a whole wave of Anchorman pops. Very cool, but... A little random, if you ask me. We also got Alien as Kevin, the start of the Disney Remix Pops. A very cool line if you're a Disney collector, but once again, just a little out of left field. Still okay, though. So, overall, the con was a little bit of a letdown. Didn't really live up to my expectations, especially for San Diego Comic-Con. We've gotten so many cool pops and exclusives and limited pieces in the past, I know a lot of people were excited about some of this stuff, but for me, it just wasn't my con. I was able to pick up a few pops that we really did like. Uh, Joanne and I were very excited for this X-Men Nightcrawler. Uh, he has a very cool pose. We actually keep him out of box. I put him back in the box just for the sake of the video, but very cool pop, very dynamic pose. We really like that one. We got another Office pop, and this is version 2 of Recyclops Dwight. Uh, it's actually version 3 from the show, but we're going to go with it's version 2 in the Funko uh, linear timeline here. Um, very cool pop. He actually is holding a sign that says conserve. Um, so they kind of kept a nice Dwight office theme from Emerald City Comic Con moving into San Diego Comic Con. And um, pretty cool. I like the office, so I had to pick up this one. Another pop that's very cool that I really enjoyed. This is the Michelangelo with surfboard. And I like this one a lot because they actually have the San Diego Comic-Con logo on the board. I'm really hoping they finish the rest of the set and then we get the other three turtles exclusive to future cons. So maybe we'll get another one for Emerald City Comic-Con 2021, maybe SDCC 2021. We'll get another turtle. I think it'd be really cool if we had a whole set of turtles holding their surfboards with the con logos on the surfboard. So props to Funko. This is a very cool pop and we were very excited to pick this one up. There was also a few other pops I did like. I liked the Stan Lee, the Cyborg Superman, and uh, the Marty McFly checking his watch. I know a lot of people thought that was kind of a, a lame pop or it didn't have a lot of detail or a dynamic pose to it, but I liked it and I haven't had a chance to pick it up yet. It's, it's on my to-do list. So overall, like I said, not really living up to the hype of SDCC, but that's okay because now we're going to talk about NYCC 2020. All right, guys, so now we're going to break down NYCC, New York Comic Con, right here in our backyard. We usually go every year, so it was a huge bummer that we weren't able to go this year. But, of course, uh, safety first, everyone's health comes first. And, uh, you know, hopefully there is a light at the end of the tunnel coming very soon with the end of this pandemic. So, here we go. We're going to jump right into NYCC. Now, they did it a little bit differently as compared to SDCC. They had a lottery 
where you had to enter in via email on the Funko site uh, with your account, and several people were still selected. A lot of people were not. And I want to just flat out give a huge shout out to a lot of my close friends and some people I want to mention today because some of these pops I would not have been able to get without the thoughtfulness and just the kind generosity of a few people who were able to get into the lottery and then pick up pops for myself and Joanna. So huge shout out to you guys. Um, like I said, I want to give some shout outs because you guys deserve it. Our Funko family came to play and that means a lot. It's very important. So let's get into NYCC. It was full of surprises. I'll just say that full of surprises. So the catalog had Originally, we thought 43 pops, but we ended up getting two bonus pops, which I will talk about. So we got 45 pops and four sodas, and we also got our first exclusive Comic-Con t-shirt bundle, which is pretty cool. All right, so the biggest surprise I have to talk about right off the bat is my man right here, and this is Boba Fett. We saw a little rumor of a leaked photo of Boba Fett. We didn't know if it was actually going to be at the con, if it was just a mismarked photo, and we saw a little hint of a limited piece sticker. Look at this, guys. This is the 1,000 piece limited Boba Fett from the con. He kind of has a, com a camo scheme going on there. So he showed up on the site for $100. And uh, he also came with something pretty cool. And that is this exclusive Boba Fett backpack, courtesy of Loungefly. So this backpack and the pop came as a set. The pop actually fits inside of the backpack right here, which is pretty cool. To be honest, I have not done it. It, it, uh, it looks very cool, but I'm just a little worried to take this guy out of the box. He's very minty, and I want to keep him that way because... Boba Fett's the man. We just saw him in Mandalorian. And uh, I was just so hyped that I was able to get my hands on this pop. So 1,000 pieces, true grail. I don't see this pop declining in price anytime soon. But the limited pieces do not stop there. We got quite a bit of stuff, guys. So we had a 2,500 piece Pixie and Dixie set. We thought it might have been a two-pack. It was ended up being separate pops. Pixie and Dixie are from the Hanna-Barbera line. We actually just sold two of them on our whatnot auction the other day, so that was exciting. Another pop that wasn't limited, but very cool, and I have not been able to get my hands on yet, was the Wonder Woman pop. Very excited for Wonder Woman 1984. Should be coming out in two weeks, or less than two weeks with Christmas. So super excited. I need to get my hands on that pop as soon as possible. And that one happens to glow in the dark, so very cool. Another big reveal, huge hit for New York City Comic Con. We got a Carl an Ellie two pack. Now this wasn't just a two pack, like the standard two pack. It was actually more of a movie moment. Once again, haven't got my hands on that pop yet. Super excited when I finally do. All right. So the Boba Fett was our first surprise. Our next surprise from NYCC was in conjunction with plastic empire. They dropped a 3000 piece glow Marty McFly. Uh, very, very cool pop. We'll make sure to throw up a picture for you guys. I have not had the chance to get one yet, although I'm very excited. Uh, you can only get one through Plastic Empire site. They had problems at well, as well. It crashed, and then they did some mystery boxes. Um, I have not seen a lot of them floating around the secondary market yet, so I'm excited for hopefully in the next six months or so seeing more of them on the market and up for sale. Um, but once again, guys, the limited edition Exclusive pieces do not stop there. We also got a 1,000 piece Snake Pliskin pop. He was, of course, Kurt Russell's character from Escape from New York. Uh, another just pop that we did not expect. We got a 2,000 piece Bloody Ben from the Umbrella Academy. Very popular show. A lot of people were very excited about that. The biggest surprise, in my opinion, from NYCC and the one I was super excited about was the Freddy Funko soda so this is our second freddy funko soda and uh the first one exclusive to a comic con 2000 pieces for the common and only 300 for the chase chase is very cool have not got myself the chase yet but i do have the common and i absolutely love it he's got his i heart new york new york shirt on there they did a great job they brought the funko soda chases back they corrected their ways from SDCC and moving into NYCC 
we got our chases back. So they dropped three other sodas. Um, very, very cool. Um, so we also got uh, another limited piece, a 1500 poly pigeon pop. I don't think that pop was a big hit. It, for 1500 pieces, it's only going for about $70, $75 right now. Those poly pigeons are kind of the duds of New York City Comic Con, in my opinion. They're technically ad icons, but um, they're, they're just kind of fall right in line with the two cans from SDCC. They're just not that exciting, in my, in my opinion. Um, we also got a Breast Cancer Series Joker, which I was lucky enough to get. This was the only pop I was able to get from the secondary leftover drop from NYCC when they made it available to everyone. This is a fantastic pop. It's the same or similar Joker as the original DC Joker. However, all of the proceeds from these pops for the first $25,000 went right to breast cancer research. So very excited that Funko did that. Very, very cool. So overall, NYCC, very, very cool. We also got some other pops. Um, we got this Jiminy Cricket pop the other day in a mystery box. So that was very exciting. We got our Danny Phantom pop right here. Um, phenomenal piece. They did a great job. A lot of people were very excited about this one, including myself. I remember growing, growing up watching the show, Danny Phantom. I loved it. Amazing pop. And uh, another pop, speaking of DC really quick. I was so hyped for this Nightwing pop. Nightwing is my favorite DC superhero. And uh, when he was getting another variant of a pop, I was super pumped. And I have to give a huge shout out to Jason from Colorado Pops for thinking of me and grabbing this pop from the drop. He was able to get into the lottery. Thank you so much, Jason. You know, you guys are awesome. Just the way you guys thought of me, it just, it meant so much, especially getting a character that means so much to me. So thank you. Another person I have to give a quick shout out to is Parker from Monthly Pops. He was able to get me the Dwight Recyclops with the con sticker. So another another Comic-Con, another Dwight, another Recyclops. I'm not complaining. I love The Office. My last shout out goes to my man Jonathan. He was able to pick up Stitch as Baker for Joanna's collection. Um, I thought this was a little bit of a lazy pop in terms of you know a Comic-Con exclusive. However... Who doesn't love Stitch? Stitch is awesome. We have a lot of Stitch Pops. Joanna has a huge collection. It's awesome. So uh, overall, I thoroughly enjoyed NYCC. From a Star Wars collector standpoint, the Boba Fett was awesome. The bag is very cool. Um, we also had a child holding the Mythosaur pendant. I wasn't super excited for that pop just because I'm not a huge child fan. I'm more of a Boba Fett Mando fan. Um, and the other pops that we got in terms of Star Wars, we got a Luke and Leia both in training mode. That would have been really cool if it was a two-pack. However, the pops were singles. So still cool pops, just, you know, uh, didn't get me super excited as a Star Wars collector. So, all right, guys, so now we're going to break it down. We're going to do a, a recap of everything we just talked about. Who had the best con for this year? So... As you guys could probably tell by my excitement, I have to go with NYCC coming in at number one. Overall, they had the most limited pieces, they had a diverse catalog, and all the sodas had chases. Coming in at our number two spot, I'm going to go with Emerald City Comic Con. Um, they did have some limited pieces, they introduced the sodas, the sodas had chases, and they had a good mix of items even though the catalog wasn't as big. So that's why it's coming in at number two. For number three, rounding up the the, uh, the pack here is SDCC. Really just a big letdown with no Freddies this year. Not enough limited pieces, in my opinion, for San Diego. I mean, this is San Diego Comic-Con we're talking about. This is, this is a big deal. Everybody gets super pumped. It's the beginning of the summer. It's awesome. A lot of stuff. There's usually a lot of big movie announcements, movie trailers. Um, I just feel like it did not live up to the standard of previous SDCCs, even though it was virtual. So one thing I would have wished that uh, SDCC had also done was it would have been really cool if we had a Boba Fett. We had a Boba Fett at Emerald City Comic Con, and of course we had the limited one for NYCC. Just on a side note, I wish San Diego Comic Con did have one. Last year they had the green chrome one, so it, it would have been cool to have three just like we had three Dwights. So now looking ahead for 2021 really quick, and we're going to do a full breakdown on what we hope to get in 2021, but for right now, 
We're not going to have NYCC once again. We're not going to have SDCC. Emerald City Comic Con, we might get in person as it's currently scheduled for December 2nd through the 5th of next year. So there is hope, but guys, get ready. Go get some bots. Go do what you got to do because we have plenty of virtual cons that we're going to have to deal with next year. So a little bit of a bummer that we still have to deal with these virtual cons. However, uh, there is light on the horizon, and I truly believe that we're going to be going to uh, Comic Cons uh, hopefully a year from now. Uh, with Emerald City Comic Con. That would be really cool. But definitely 2022, maybe at the end of 2021, we will see. So, guys, let me know what you thought. What was the best con, in your opinion? And what was your favorite Comic Con exclusive Funko item from either of the three cons? Uh, my favorite, I just got to go with my man Boba Fett from NYCC. So freaking cool. A thousand pieces. I love it. It's the coolest, coolest pop, in my opinion, from the comic cons this year so that's gonna do it for today's video guys don't forget to stop by pop force one tonight at 9 p.m eastern myself professor josh rock and row and pop and duo we're gonna be cracking open some boxes having some fun and hanging out with you guys so and there might even be a giveaway or two so why don't you pop on over and have a good time so thank you guys for watching this video a little bit of throwback thursday action and uh remember guys don't stop shooting until you score We'll see you tomorrow for our couples duel.